Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. In the last video, we explained issues regarding privacy on the blockchain, how having everything public can affect values thought to be private, such as passwords, hidden functions, and randomization routines. Now let's dive into exploiting a simple authorization issue on the blockchain. Last time we did our whole lab inside of Remix, and that's cool, but let's dive a little deeper this time into the blockchain rabbit hole. Let's learn how to interact with live contracts wherever they live. We will use Remix to publish our contract again, but we are not going to use Remix's JavaScript VM. Instead, we're going to run an in-memory blockchain on our local machine. Remix will publish our contracts to the in-memory blockchain, and we will exploit it from its decentralized application page. By reviewing the code, importing its ABI interface, then exploiting the issue from our browser's JavaScript console. Head over to the CC Labs GitHub page and grab the zip file containing all of the code we'll need. In there is the Solidity code and also the HTML page. You can grab that there. If we open up the folder, you will see the HTML page. You'll also see a .sol file for your Solidity and then some CSS and node module stuff for Web3. If we open up our authorization target by opening it up in Sublime and going to Open Folder so we can see all the files on the side, first thing you'll notice is that we have our deposit function like last time, nothing's changed. We also have a new transfer function. It takes a transfer amount and it takes a to address. It uses these values right here in order to transfer the money. It also updates the balance afterwards. We have a balance function that will return our current balance. And in the constructor, you'll notice that it's setting a bank manager to whoever actually uh, called this originally. But there's also a bank manager which can be set with an access control function. And the function is set as public and sets it to whoever calls it. If we check where this bank manager is used, in the transfer function, it will say, hey, if the message.sender is not the bank manager, require that transfer amount is not more than 5 Ether. So what do you do if you want to transfer more than 5 Ether? Well, this function right here is a public function. So if we know it exists, we can call it, just as long as we know how to call it. And since most uh, blockchain projects are open source, you should be able to do a little bit of source code review like we just did and notice that the function exists. So although an interface, such as this one, only shows a deposit function and a transfer funds function, how do we go about actually hacking this so that we can send as much ether as we want? Or in any other case, bypass functionality that maybe a bank administrator would have that we wouldn't. So let's check out how to do that now. It's gonna require a little bit of setup with Node, which I'll try to walk you through, but you have to note that Node and uh, Ethereum coding is an ever-changing uh, environment for the development. You are going to run into issues while you're coding, and you're just going to have to Google it and figure out what's going on um, because that's just part of the game. So hopefully what I show you here will get you started, and then any kind of issues you run into, you should be able to figure it out with a little bit of searching and finding people with other common issues. So after you get the files downloaded and you unzip the file folder, you're going to want to install node.js. Um, I install the 10.15.0 version. You do this for whichever operating system you have. I've done this on Windows and Mac without issue. It should work on Linux as well. I've also used uh, Web3 on Linux before without issue. So once you get that installed, um, head over to your terminal and you can type in the following npm minus v. It will tell you the version of npm that was installed with your node install. For me, it was 6.4.1. For you, it might be something different. Next up, we're going to need to install ganache. We can do that with npm install ganache cli. I'm not going to do this here as I already have it installed. This will take a minute. Once it's done, you should have a Ganache installed, and you can load that up by typing ganache-cli. Wait a minute for that to load up. Once it does, if we scroll up here and take a look, you'll see that we have nine accounts with 100 Ether in each account. We also have the private keys if we need to load that into MetaMask or something else. 
and we are listening on port 8545 on the local host. Let's head over to Remix and we're going to delete out the stuff that's currently there. Also make sure that you're using HTTP version of Remix, not HTTPS, or else you're gonna run into some issues. Right here, we're going to put a target.soul and then we're gonna copy paste our code into here. Another thing to note is that we are using Solidity version five um, so we're going to have to change the compiler version. So we're going to use the uh, commit of 0.5.2 if you're following along and run into issues, try that compiler version. The important change we need to do is under run, change JavaScript VM to Web3 provider and use the default of localhost 8545, which Ganache runs on. We see some information scrolling, so we should be good. Then we're going to deploy our contract. We should get a transaction ID scrolling as well as the contract address. With that, we are good to go. Let's copy paste our uh, contract address into our HTML and then take a look at our HTML. If we head over to target.html, you should see an add contract address here. Just paste that address in here and let's take a look at this HTML. This is a really easy to understand file. You can pretty much ignore all of this at the top. It's just import stuff. Then we have a deposit form. You can see the deposit form here. It's just the deposit with the button. And it's same thing for the transfer. So on the transfer, we have our transfers fund label. We have an amount, we have an address, and then we have a button. You can see all of this on the form. However, what we don't see is a way to do the administrative functionality. And that is what we're gonna get into now and how to bypass the restrictions. In order to directly interact with the blockchain, we're gonna need the ABI file, which is kind of like the API to the blockchain. If we download this for our uh, Solidity file, we can paste this where I have add ABI here. Uh, make sure to get rid of the quotes as well. Um, so this is basically the API to our uh, Solidity file. So you'll see the access control and the deposit function. Below this are just the functions that already exist in order to use the forms for the get balance and the deposit and transfer. So if we save this file by hitting Control S and we refresh our page, we should now see a zero balance occur, which means that we're now connected to the blockchain and it's grabbing our balance. If we hit deposit and check out our Ganache window, we should see a transaction ID. Perfect. So if we refresh, we see that we now have a balance of one to the 18th power way, which is one ether. So let's deposit uh, nine ether and refresh. We should now have another zero. Perfect, we have 10 ether in our account. So let's open up our developer tool so we can check out what's going on here. Let's open this up a little bigger so we can see. Um, under here, you'll see that we have our bank manager we have our balance, we have our deposit functions, we can check out a little bit more info on the deposit. We can also check out information on the transfer. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what happens now when we send some uh, money across using the transfer. Um, we're going to send uh, one ether. We're also going to need an address. So let's head over to Remix, which automatically loads in our Ganache addresses and grab an address with 100 ether in it. We can copy paste that right there. And if we paste that in the address field and we hit transfer funds, you're gonna see the Ganache window scroll. We now have a transaction ID on the blockchain, perfect. So what happens if we try to send more than five ether, so six, and we have an error. So this is where our authorization comes in. Before we proceed, we should also check Remix and make sure that we have more than 100 Ether. We have 101, so we're good to go. So because most blockchain projects are open source, we know that there's an access control method that will turn us into a bank manager and allow us to bypass that restriction of 5 Ether. So we'll call that method directly, and then we will transfer our funds, and it should work. We have a transaction ID, and if we check in Remix, we should now have more than 101 Ether. We do, we have 107. So we can also do this via command line. Let's deposit a little bit more Ether. So we're gonna deposit 10. We'll refresh the page. 
and we have 14 ether available. So on the command line, we can actually use a call directly with transfer, and we can do this. So we go bank, transfer, and then we're going to use a function called two-way. What two-way does is it will convert to ether, so we don't have to type out uh, 18 zeros. So we go uh, web3 two-way. Then we put in our amount, which is 1. And then we'll put ether, which is our unit of value we're sending in. There's a lot of unit of values in uh, Ethereum. And then now we're going to need our uh, address that we're sending it to. We'll send it to the same address as before. We'll need that in quotes. And we'll need our last parenthesis. And we should be good. Um, you'll see a transaction ID. Perfect. If we check remix, we should update here. Perfect, it shows that we have 108 now. Okay, awesome. So as you can see, with access to the ABI file and access to the source code, an attacker can directly call unsecured functions and bypass restrictions. These ABI files and source code files are often available due to the open source nature of blockchain projects and hard to update when there are issues due to the immutability of the blockchain. Now, I know this was a lot of information thrown at you. Take a little time, digest it, go through the labs a few times, play with the functions in Remix, look at the simple code and how to call the functions within the HTML, and understand how we bypass restrictions due to the public nature of the blockchain. Now, I hope you learned something today. If you did, please hit the like button, it really helps, and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and you want to be updated of new videos.